Hello friends, this is Kara Renee with Be Reborn Art and Healing coming to you with the promised mixed media, coffee dye mixed media paper. Um, I had shared a video of some papers that I made off camera and I had a lot of interest in um, doing a tutorial. So I'm going to do that today. So I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about supplies that I have in front of me. I've got two silicone brushes. I like to use them to um, to put like acrylic paint into the stencil and into the coffee on the paper um, and this brush helps. So we've got some gold, um, the iridescent gold fine. I've got some sap green. Mostly what I'm using are acrylic inks. So I use Liquitex acrylic inks and I also used um, Daler Rowney inks. So I'm gonna try to stay in camera. I had to really um, mess with the camera to get everything in view here at, at least um, I think <laughs> so I think it's gonna work so I'm gonna move this and I just put a towel down over here um, on uh, so that I can just pull these inks out and I don't have a mess on my desk so um, in order to stay in camera though I want you to see more about what's going on over here so I'm thinking if I slide this over more so we may lose some visibility for the actual coffee dipping part because I want you to see what I'm doing with the stencils and I want you to see what I'm doing with the inks. So let me move this again. Sorry guys, this is tricky. I have a very small space here, so it's, it's hard to get everything in view. I suppose I could turn this this way, but then I would lose more space. So I'm gonna keep it like this. I think I went through this in the last tutorial I did, <laughs> my paper. So. The other thing that I ran into when I did the batch on my own is I actually ran out of stencils because when I do this process, I basically dip my paper, put the paper over here, I put a stencil on it, uh, or put some, drip some ink, acrylic inks and stuff on it, paint, and then I put a stencil on top. And then I might come in and put some gold paint just to kind of push up against the edges of the stencil, which I'll show you. And then I just, then I dip another piece of paper and I put that one, I flip that paper over on to the paper that has the stencil sandwiched in between. So that means that I do kind of run out of stencils. So I don't have that many. I don't think I want to use, I didn't look at these actually and see if I wanted to use all these. This one would be okay. I'm not thinking I want that one. It's too small. This one will be fine. I don't want that one. I, these must be all the unfiled stencils in my binder. So, um, yeah, I don't want that either. I don't want that. Goodness gracious, I should have done my homework for Pete's sake. Um, I think I might try that one again, and then these, the rest of these are all good. And so what I did is I went through my 12 by 12 stencils as well and pulled some just so that I don't run out. And I have not used most of these for coffee dyeing. Like I've never used this one, but I thought it would be cool. And then we've got this um, this weird script. It's like a like an old English script, which I love. <clears throat> the note to me made here is you do have to turn this over so it's um, backwards, I believe. No, so um, so where I got mixed up when I did mine off camera is it's all right for the stencil to be in the the right orientation on the first on the you know when you put your paper down you put this down but if you put another piece of paper on top of it you're gonna your writing's then gonna be backwards but it's not a huge deal I, I don't get too concerned about that and then I thought this one would be fun I haven't used this for coffee dyeing before I've got a lace stencil completely forgot I had that and then I've got this one with all these fun words I thought about art and all kinds of stuff I thought that would be fun and then this butterfly wouldn't this butterfly be awesome it might be too big but I think if I turn it this way we might be able to get a good a good print out of that a good uh, paper and then this is just more script and then we've got some pebble ones which I thought would be really pretty and then some wings this has all kinds of wings on it it's very messy you guys whoops this way so it's kind of hard to see what they look like but 
Um, obviously, I use this for mixed media. <laughs> it's a mixed media mess. And then another lace stencil. So those are our stencils. These are the ones I'm using lastly. They're not my preferred stencils. These are my preferred stencils. So, and all of these are, all of these uh, eight and a half by 11 ones are from Shampetite.com. She's my favorite resource to get um, stencils. So, I am going to go ahead and step away a moment. I forgot to grab some paper and then I also need to go get, go get my water. So I'm going to go ahead and pour my coffee in. I just buy, this is Fred Meyer coffee. I'm just going to pour some in here and um, I feel like I'm leaning though. This is going to be a problem because the end of my thing, I think I'm going to have to go clear over here. So let me see if I can shift this a little bit more. Sorry, nothing's automated with this uh, system here. So it might be look like it's a little sideways, but this then I know it's on a flat surface that's not going to be compromised. So I'm going to pour. I use a lot of coffee, so I'm just going to pour that in there like that much. Okay, and I'm going to step away, get my water, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pour my. This is just a you know teapot thing, so I'm just going to pour my water in. And I'll probably have to do this a couple times. I think in the last batch I did two full things of coffee or two full things of water, which is, it looks like this is 1.2 liters. So I'm just gonna set this aside out of my way. It's very, very hot. I also have towels, towels over there and some plastic bags under it. And that's where I'll be laying my paper. So I may be going back and forth to kind of keep track of what I'm doing. Obviously this is now very hot. So I'm gonna to have to be very, very careful. I'm gonna get some gloves on because I do not like having my hands coffee stained. Kind of freaks me out. So I'm just gonna stir that a bit. And then we will get going. So let's see what we wanna, what color, what inks we wanna start with. I'm gonna set these aside. And where are we gonna put them? Goodness gracious, I do not have enough room in this studio. There we go. So I've got paper. So I talked um, in my other video about this paper that I used that showed all the cotton fibers. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's got these speckles on it, but it must have a really high cotton content because I could see the fibers in it. So I've got a bunch of that and then I've got a bunch of, um, this is 49 pound copy paper. I don't like coffee staining 20 pound paper. I don't like doing much with 20 pound paper to be honest with you. So I need to figure out what to do with this paper. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna pull my garbage can over and set it over here. There we go. Got a plan. Okay, so, and then these are, these are the stencils we do not need. So let me get rid of those. Let me just throw them on the floor, why not? Okay, so I'm gonna get some gloves here. Of course you don't have to use gloves. It's just what I prefer, so. Um, you do want to make, make be very careful when you're doing this because this is very hot and I do go in when it is still pretty, pretty hot. So I'm going to have a high pain tolerance, you guys. <laughs> That's the truth. It's the honest truth. Uh, I don't feel things like other people feel things physically. So here we go. Dr. Wolf is in the room. Okay, so the other thing I wanna do is make sure I have some paper towels. So I'm just gonna grow, grab my roll and get that over here as well, where I can reach it a little bit better. Sorry for all of the, the confusion here. So I need to do this. I need to be right here. So I'm gonna be right here <laughs> visually. So I'm gonna pull out my gold ink. I'm gonna pull out my raw umber. Well, these are some of my favorite, favorite. Oh, that's burnt sienna. That would be pretty. Uh, my sap green. And I'll show you these here as we go along as well. So I didn't put these in in any order. So I'm trying, hoping I can, there's just some raw umber. Not much in that. I'll probably have to pull the other jar. So I'm going to set those right there and we're going to start dipping. I'm going to start with that really cottony paper. I probably should put that in a different stack. There we go. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just lay one of these in here. And I'll probably speed through some of this, you guys, because this could take forever and a day. So I just get it all wet, 
and I'm, I'm barely touching the water so I don't have to really worry about it being too, too terribly hot. So then I bring this over here, lay it down, okay? And then I'm going to go ahead and squirt on some inks. So this is the Sap Green from Liquitex. It's Sap Green Permanent. It's a very, very vibrant green. So what we'll do is we'll create the paper and then I'll come back and do an, a, an additional piece on the end of the video when these papers are all dried and I can remove all the stencils, which will probably be in real time. It will be probably a couple of days. So I'm going to pull out my, uh, this is transparent raw umber. It's my favorite um, color for grunginess. So we're just going to drop that in as well. I don't worry about using a lot because that's how I get the results that I get. I'm gonna have to pull that other one out of my drawer. So then I'm gonna also get some gold in. This is iridescent gold uh, bright. So we're gonna drop that in as well. It's getting warm in here. <sighs> okay, so like that. And what happens when you put your stencil on is the ink will will push up against the parts of the stencil. And um, I'm not concerned about using a lot because I am actually going to get more prints out of this than what you see. So, um, and let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna use this stencil first. It's one of my favorites from Sean Petit. Really, really cute, cool uh, design. It doesn't cover the whole page, which is a bummer, but that's all right. We're gonna lay that down. We're gonna grab another piece of paper, dip it in our coffee. And you guys, you could do this in any space because I am literally sitting in an L-shaped desk that is so, everything's so close together and so cluttered, it's crazy. So I'm gonna lay this one on top, okay, like that. Okay, I try to line the pages up as best I can and I'm gonna just kind of push that down a little bit. And then we're gonna go in with more inks. So let me let me try another interesting color. This is a muted green from Liquitex. This is the muted collection from Liquitex. Really gorgeous colors. I should probably grab my water as well. Hold on guys. Just got a squirt squirt bottle over here just to kind of get some of this to move so we get more bang for our buck. And I think with this one, I wanna go in with a little bit of yellow. So I've got this yellow, which is uh, Indian yellow from Daler Rowney. So I'm just gonna drop some of that in as well. Oh my goodness, that's so pretty. Okay. That's that. And then um, I think I'm gonna drop another stencil in here. And I will from time to time just do a regular coffee dyed paper. I'll probably be setting them over, over there. And then if I want to add something to them, I'll just grab them and bring them back over. So here's another one of Sean's stencils. And on this one, I'm gonna go in with my gold ink, which is this ink that I mentioned before, the iridescent gold fine. Part of my problem is my camera is is not, it's like tip tip. So I feel like I'm like, <laughs> I have to push things upside down. And I'm just gonna squirt this out. And I'm gonna use my brush to kind of disperse it a little bit. I'm not using a lot, but it, this really goes, gets pushed up against the edges of the stencil and gets those really cool effects that you guys probably saw in the photos. What did I do with those spatulas? There they are. So I'm just gonna use this just to kind of move it around a little bit. I'm gonna try to get some of it off of the stencil and into the holes, just so I'm not wasting. I don't worry too much about it. And then this one, I think we're gonna go ahead and do another piece of paper. Just dipping it in there. I, I might not need two, two pans of coffee because I'm not doing a textiles today, which I I have done in the past so so we're gonna set that one on this coffee feels a little bit light for me so I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle in a little bit more because the water is still pretty hot and just get a little bit of a darker bit there I prefer it darker 
So there we go. This almost look, looks tea stained. It's a little too mellow, <laughs> too mellow for me. So um, I'm going to go in. Let's see. I bought some new inks actually today in um, preparation for this. So I got this one, which is a Daler Rowney liquid acrylic. This is a pearlescent. So where did the other one go? Where did it go? Come on, Karen. It's kind of hard to see all this in here now, so because I have to look over the edge of this. Oh, is this one of them? No, but this is one I thought would be cool to mix these two colors. It's like a mint green, which is really not a color that's up my alley, but I thought we would try it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Haven't used this before, so we'll see. So far, so good. It's really pretty. And then um, I thought we had another iridescent one. So besides that, oh, this one. This is um, an iridescent autumn gold. So let's use that. This is going to be pretty mellow, which is nice. This will be more of a everyday kind of kind of paper rather than some that's a little bit more color themed for particular journals that I do. So this one, I don't think I'm going to put a stencil on it because you don't have to put a stencil on everything. I'm just going to grab another piece of paper. I'm going to coffee dye it like so. And I'm going to just place it down there. That didn't really darken it, did it? That's all right. So now we're going to go in with more. So one of the beautiful colors I used in the samples that I showed you was this Daler Rowney Marine Blue. It is absolutely stunning. Absolutely gorgeous color. Look at this. Look at that. It's just, it's magical all by itself. So I don't know really what to tell you if you don't have acrylic inks. You can do a lot of these things with watered down acrylics, other kinds of sprays and things like that. These are just the supplies that I have, so they're what I'm using. So I'm gonna go in with this autumn gold. This is that iridescent one and drop it in here too. I think that would be pretty. I do like to kind of get it, get the colors everywhere, you know. This one is beautiful and I think we need a stencil on this one. So I'm going to grab another one. Um, I think I'm going to grab one of the ones that I don't, well, I don't want to dip into those ones yet. Goodness gracious, Karen, make up your mind. I do have my numbers jumbled stencil, which I really love. So what I was saying though, is if you put it the right side up for this print, if you put something on top of it, upside down, it's going to be backwards, but that's okay. We're just going to go with it. Okay, I'm going to drop, so another thing that I do is I'll drop some of the raw umber on top of the stencil. And so let's do that. I'm probably going to have to reach behind me and get more of this. Oh, that's not the raw umber. That's the purple. Goodness gracious. Where'd our raw umber go? Did I put it back in the thing? There it is. I wish I could show you everything that's around me so you could see the whole process, but we'll work with what we have, right? So this is so fun, so fun, so fun. Okay, this is not even coming out right now very well. There we go, that's a lot. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and do another piece and put it on top of that. Again, upside down, so those those numbers are going to be backwards on this one, but that's okay. It's not no, nobody's going to be examining this and going, "Oh, that's terrible! How terrible that you did that!" There we go. Okay. So so you can see the speckles on this paper, which I think is also pretty darn cool. So I want to do some red. I don't really have a really vibrant pink, so I thought I would try. Um, Maybe this magenta with a little bit of white. I haven't tried that before, just to kind of see if I can lighten it a bit. So I'm just gonna shake this one up. I don't even think I've used this one yet. It is Liquitex Cranacridone Magenta. Really beautiful color. It's just a little bit too bright for my taste, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that on here. Very, very bright. 
And I will tell you the Daler Rowney inks tend to be a little bit less expensive than the Liquitex, depending on where you buy them. So I'm going to go ahead and go in with this um, platinum. This is called Rose Platinum, and this is the shimmer one. I think that would be really complimentary here too. And I'm going to go in with some white because I really want to see if I can create some lighter passages, passages of color on here. So again, shake these up really good. Let's see if we can get some white out here. Oh yeah. Ooh, look at that. This will be interesting to see what happens with this white ink. Very interesting indeed. I don't know. We'll find out together. So um, this one, I'm going to go ahead and use one of the bigger stencils because I'm already feeling like I'm running out of room here. We won't. I'm, I'm just showing you the technique, basically, guys. I can't. Um, I can't show you everything because it would take forever. So I'm just going to place this down like that. Okay, and it's just I can feel that stencil just kind of trying to suck in that ink. And I'm going to go in with my. Um, this is the bright gold again. I'm just going to drop some of that in for a little bit of added gold goldiness. This is acrylic ink, so I don't worry so much about you know spreading it out like I was doing with the the um, the iridescent golden fluid acrylic. So. I get different results so don't expect to get to see the same things you saw in the other in the other video because I cannot you can't replicate it it's just it, it's magic it happens and you embrace the magic at the time it's happening and that's about all you can do so I think I'm going to go in with some of the olive green this is um, from Daler Rowney I just feel like I want a little bit more earthy color in this so we're just going to do it see what happens never know until till you try. It's a lot of ink, guys. This is way more than I usually do. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Everything's just kind of floating on the surface here. I think on this one I'm just going to lay a piece of paper down here. And this is an example. Um, I'm going to dip that rather. Forgive me. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to place this down. Okay, and I think I'm going to move this whole stack now and just get it out of my way very carefully because I, I don't want everything to move. I want it to stay as um, plain as possible. So plain, that didn't make any sense. <laughs> so more, more coffee dyeing. I don't think we'll need another batch. We'll be able to get this done. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit, guys, um, and stop my yakety yakin and just let you see what I'm playing with. I will hold up each of the colors so that you can see. So sometimes what I'll do, which wasn't, I wasn't very clear about earlier, is I'll take this. Oh, there's not much color coming off at all. Um, we're going to leave that on. And those colors are not bright enough for me to do that. Sometimes I can lift this page up, set it over there, soak up another, you know, put another piece on it and just kind of transfer, make mini sheets out of one. But that's not happening there. It's a little bit too light. I've got some blue and I also have... Actually, let's try this. Um, this is Muted Pink from Liquitex. It's a great color. So the other thing is, guys, when you add brown, you mute out color. So anything that feels too bright, this brown is going to help um, to kind of um, desaturate it. So it's a great, oh, we're getting some green colors. That's interesting. 
I did not expect that. That is not staying brown. It's turning green. I never thought about that. I'm just going to put some around the edge here too. So as you can see my, st oh my goodness, this plunger is not working. Um, we're getting, um, you know, we have all this area. This one's not so bad because it doesn't have a square um, border, but um, the stencils aren't big enough for the this paper. So I'm going to dip again. So on this one I'm going in with quite a bit of ink within the stencil because the stencil design is very small. It's not going to take up very much of the paper so what I'm hoping is that if I do this I can kind of push out some of that color so that it, e it oozes out beyond the boundaries of the stencil itself. I need to grab some more paper here just a moment. I may only use this speckled paper because I really, really like it, so. I wonder what we can mix with this. Let me grab my color wheel here. I don't want to deliberately make mud, so I'm grabbing, I've got to find it here in my, just reaching up in front. So. On the color wheel, I would not want to add green because then I'm going to get mud, but I could add a different shade of purple or blue to really make that pop. So let me, let me do that. Let's get that blue. Let's use that indigo. I really, really like that, but I don't think I shook it up enough. I was getting some really strange granu granulation that I'm not sure I was supposed to get with that ink. So let's see what it does here. I like really deep rich papers guys you could obviously go really mellow with this and we'll do some pages that are a little bit less intense just to show you um, using the stencils as well um, so we'll see Goodness gracious, let's try that olive. Where'd that olive go? This is the olive green from Daler Rowney. Ooh, interesting color. I kind of like it. So that'll just be a regular coffee dyed paper without a stencil. Although I do think I want to do one more print on top of it just to get the most out of that ink as I can. So I'm just grabbing another piece of paper here. I like to shake it out a little bit just so I don't get I get as much moisture. This takes forever to dry because I use so many so many mediums that it's kind of crazy. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of pat this. See if I can get some transfer of that ink and then I'm gonna set it over. I'm gonna turn this one over on my other stack uh, to the left of me. Hopefully. Hopefully I can do that. Yep, look at that. Look at that. It's beautiful. 
Okay, let's get that over there. It's a beautiful paper. So this has got still a lot. I think I'm gonna just go in with this paper and not get it all wet because I just really need to sop up some of that. It's a lot of, a lot of ink. There we go, that's much better. I actually love this. Love what's happening there. Not what I expected, not what I was going after, but we're gonna go for it. Setting that over to my left and this I love. So I think I'm gonna try to pick this stack up and get it, oh, it's gonna pick up okay. Everything will start to run because there's so much fluid and we're gonna go for our last batch. I'm just gonna move these um, pulses out of the way so I can make another pile, there we go. And um, I'm gonna go ahead, I don't wanna use all of that paper, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to my regular uh, 49 pound paper here, just the white. And let's just uh, make a few just regular pieces of coffee dyed paper, just putting a little bit of ink on them. And then we're going to do more on the top of this and then we'll we'll just start doing this a little bit and just kind of flip flapping these which is what I normally do let's get some of this in magenta quinacridone magenta really really bright color but it's gorgeous I'm going to go a little bit more uh, mellow on that I tend to get a little carried away I'm going to try to use up this bottle of raw umber with a bad plunger doesn't want to plunge very well that's gonna, this brown is gonna push back that vibrancy of, the, of that magenta. Come on, come out. Okay, Kara, Kara Renee, use your brain and just use the other plunger. So you do wanna be careful not to leave those inks open because I have spilled one, almost an entire bottle on my desk before. So you do wanna keep that in mind. For some reason, this, I don't know if it's the ink in the bottle because it's not really wanting to come out. What's going on here? Let's see if we can shake it a little bit. Looks like we got some sedimentation on the bottom, which maybe is why it's not really coming out here. We may have to just kind of, um, there's not much in there. Let's just get it on here. Yeah, see not much is coming out. It's pretty thick. Um, I can see, oh, that's really weird. Weird stuff. I'm gonna set that aside, get it out of my way. And I think I'm gonna spritz it just a little bit because I don't really, I wanna spread that out a little bit. But look at what the water does to it. It's just magical. We got some thick brown there. I'm gonna try to disperse that a little bit. Must be because I was at the end of that bottle. It's just okay. The idea with this is just have fun. Don't, don't get caught up in anything too crazy okay and I'm just gonna I'm not gonna move this pile I'm just gonna keep working on it here so I'm gonna go in with another piece I'm gonna speed this up guys Water is getting kind of cold, but that doesn't matter necessarily. So what do we want to do here? I thought I'd bring you back online here. I haven't used this pyro red. I thought I would try it with some white and see if we can get some pink. It's a very, very vibrant color, too vibrant for me. Look at that. It's crazy. Craziness. It's almost fluorescent. So let's go ahead and go in with some white and see what we get. We've got way too much going on here. Hold on. Let me um, let me 
get some more another piece of paper here and soak some of that up that's a little bit little much that came out really fast so I'm just gonna set that on and let it set for a second clear a little bit more space here for another stack I have a section over there that's probably about four feet so it's sufficient look at what we got going on here I love that love that okay so we're gonna pull this piece off and just um, set it aside so so we get more of a subtle a subtle pinkish color there which is fine that's lovely actually I'm gonna do that again this is still way too bright we're getting some wrinkles here I'm not sure why um, getting a little bit of a of a river going on it's all right this uh, brown that's this coffee dye is uh, muting that out kind of naturally as well so I'm just gonna put that down I'm actually just gonna get a plain piece of paper here and just get kind of push this I can coffee dye this when I'm done here it's actually kind of pretty by itself how about we try to spray that and just try something different let's try some some raw umber here it's going to behave differently because the paper is dry mostly dry so there we go and I'm going to go ahead and spritz that very very subtle subtle colorization of that paper it's still not my color but I might find um, I might find a need for it so I'm gonna try to drop some white in here now I'm not sure what's gonna do because this is new for me white is very opaque as you know so I'm not sure how it's gonna really behave so let's just try it and see I'm not feeling that but you don't know until it dries so I'm gonna add some of this iridescent pink as well just see what we got and you might not like everything that you create and that's okay I'm not a red person at all that is not my not my thing <laughs> at all so I'm gonna get another piece oh let me just go ahead and use this one that I just left in the water look at that I'll show it to you guys look at that isn't that interesting the effect that we got from the paper being dry very different I'm just gonna kind of pat that like so and I'm gonna go ahead and set this over there as well and actually I need to put something more on that other one so I'm gonna reach over here it's off camera I'm gonna drop some raw umber into that red pink that we had going on here because it's looking too plain for me. So I'm just gonna drop some raw umber and spray it. Sorry, that's off camera, guys, so that I can turn this piece over on it or put this one down. So I'm just gonna transfer it, set this one on the other stack. And then when I dry them, basically, it takes about two days, three days to dry, and I basically just start flipping them. And I just start, uh, while they're really wet, I keep them all, try to line them up like you see this kind of rectangle here. And then as they begin to dry, I will flip them and I will um, separate stacks so different parts of the stacks can get dry faster. So we're going to keep going here. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up. I've got more stencils over there to use and I, I want to use them. So I'm setting the white paper aside. I'm not loving it. So I'm going back to my speckled paper. So by doing that flippy flappy thing that I'm doing, I'm getting um, some subtler um, expressions here and I'm also um, sopping up a, a lot of extra ink. So that's why I'm doing that. I'm just gonna put another piece on there. I'm gonna leave that one on there. So I do need to wiggle my mouse because it's gonna go, it's gonna time out my screen. There we go. So, shall we continue? 
let's see what else we've got going on here. Um, I'm trying to think about colors that I would be more apt to use um, every in everyday life. So I'm going to go back to my sap green permanent because it's one of my favorite colors. Very, very beautiful in, um, in journals. And then I'm going to go in with the iridescent. This is that autumn gold. And we're going to finish up here shortly. And then I will come back to you and we will look at all these once they've started to do their thing. Um, well, mostly, actually, when they're mostly dry. So, like, not sopping wet, I guess is what I'm saying. Not, they don't have to be dry, but not sopping wet. For some reason I get very fatigued doing coffee dyeing and doing this mixed media paper. Probably because I sit for so long without moving. <laughs> there we go. It's going to be okay though. We're going to leave that one sandwiched in between. And what I'm doing here is just adding some texture to my paper just with my hand. Just, just beautiful. So we're going to leave that one just a normal. Uh, let's add a little bit of raw umber to that. Just a little, little color. Actually, let's do the um, the burnt sienna. We haven't used much of that before, so we'll just try that. Maybe we'll. Ooh, that's so red. Ah, not my favorite at all. My raw umber again. It's almost an orange, which is not. Again, it's not one of my. It's not one of my colors, but we're gonna go with it. And oftentimes, I'll look at this and I'll be like, "Oh, that's terrible, terrible," and then. When I see this final result, I'm just like mind blown, completely mind blown. Let's use this arch. This was one of them that I used in my show and tell video. So let's go ahead and try it. I'm just going to place that down. It's pretty non-incidental because it's there's so much open space. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of paper and I'm going to um, really let this drip dry a lot better. And just try to really get as much moisture out of that as possible. In fact, I'm going to go over here and just kind of tap, tap. There we go. Lay that down. And then that one's going to stay on there until it's mostly dry. So, um, what else do we got going on here? What do we have here? Oh, this was that. That's not my phthalo green I don't care for either. Um, how about muted green? I don't think we've used this one yet. Muted green. How about some muted green and some pinkish colors? So this is a much more earthy color, which I love. And um, I'm wondering, I haven't used this one yet. A pink and green are not going to go together, though. Let me show you when I'm saying that on the color wheel. Um, they're opposite. So red, pink is in the red family. They're opposite of green, so it's going to make mud. Which, when you're making coffee dyed paper, is not necessarily a bad thing, because you want that, you want that um, a deeper, richer color. And so I'm going to try this muted pink, and just see what we get. Again, it's just a piece of paper. It's just a little bit of coffee and a little bit of time. So I'm just going to play and so we're going to see what happens with this one. I think this might be really pretty, but I do feel like I need some gold in it though. So I'm a gold girl. <laughs>
Okay guys, we're just about to the end because I'm running out of paper. So I'm gonna just finish up here and um, I will come back and I will show you the results. And I might do a little bit more fiddling here um, just because, yeah. But I wanna let you guys go. We're uh, one minute, one hour and eight minutes real time. So um, it will be difficult to shrink that down uh, too terribly much unless I remove all of my audio and do a voiceover, which we'll see how it goes. So I will see you in the, well, I'll, I'll see you. I'm going to take a break for a couple of days and I'm just going to add on to this video the results or I might come in. Yeah, I'll probably add on to this video. So sorry for the, the waffling there. Um, thank you guys so much for being here and for requesting the video and I will see you next time. Okay, we are back with the final papers. This is actually only overnight, which just shows you the temperature outside and the season in which you do this has a, a plays a huge part in how quickly these dry. So I literally finished this at like um, 10 o'clock last night and it is uh, 7 a.m. in the morning. And there are still some that are damp, but they are they were dry enough to pull apart and stuff. So I wanna preface this by saying I did get some tearing when I pulled the papers apart. And I think the commonality that I found was that all the pages that had tearing, I had used um, the Daler Rowney ink. Not all of them, but some of them. So, um, so it's not a huge deal. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna talk to you about what I would how I would do to what I would do to make them usable. So let's go ahead and walk through these and see what we've got. So this is one of the results. Absolutely love this one. Absolutely love it. The other thing that I think might have happened is I had I had just done this like not very long ago I had done a whole session on creating the mixed media paper and I wonder if I had still some tacky acrylic inks on my stencils and that kind of aided in pulling up boy that's gross that aided in pulling up the um, the paper a layer of paper but look at that absolutely stunning so and that's the other side another one look at our butterfly you guys is that amazing or what? This is one that tore here. So when this is completely dry, is all I'm going to do is probably come in with, uh, with some some uh, archival ink, maybe some vintage photo or something, and or maybe I'll come in with a little bit more ink over there and see see what we get. But look at that, isn't that gorgeous? The other thing I discovered is I do not like the silver and I do not like the pearlescent inks that I used from Dana Rowney. I don't like that shimmer. It, I just, yeah, it they'll have a great purpose in something else, but I did not like them in this case. This is a really subtle print, really subtle. And then I love this one. I love when we get these results. This one tore as well, but when that's inked, it's actually gonna look really interesting. This was that mint color that we had and uh, mixed with some of the raw umber. I love that. I love what we get here, these paper. And I don't know if you guys can see you can see the texture of this paper. It, it's amazing. And then here's the other side again, really subtle and plain, but beautiful piece. Look at this one, guys. This was the cerulean blue and the, I believe the Indian yellow and some gold. Look at the close up of that. Just little bits of beautiful gold. That's just amazing, amazing. And then the backside is plainer. This was that one we used, I used, I might have done this one off camera when I shut the camera off, but this is that, uh, was like, like an old English font stencil, but look at that. I just love it. I think it's absolutely amazing. And then this is another one where we used that, this I believe is the mint ink um, with the, um, the raw umber. And look at this one. Ah, it's so beautiful. So beautiful. And this is the, this was the Payne's Gray, and I believe the Muted Purple. I love it. Uh, for the right journal, this is going to be absolutely amazing. I think it has some silver in it too. Again, not a fan of silver. So making a personal note for that. Here's our other butterfly. 
and again we've got that silver in there which is okay in little bits but I love how the butterfly turned out I think it could not be better so I'm, I'm excited to take photos of these I can't scan them because my scanner is terrible but I take photos and then I just keep them um, the size of the eight and a half by eleven paper and then I just use them and print them out so another plain one on the side I'm gonna go ahead and stop talking because this is gonna take forever um, another one Again, not a big fan of that shimmer. It's just not my jam. I don't like it. Um, I love what happened here. Um, and the thing with this this process, this mixed media process, is you never know what you're going to get. I would never have guessed that this page would have turned out as incredible as it did. It's absolutely stunning. This is another one with the Payne's Gray and the gold. Love it. What I love about the inks is where it leaves kind of these trails of color like I just love it almost looks like it's cracked wall or something it's just you know and that's nothing that I'm doing it's just the process and how it interacts with the paper look at that texture and that is not three-dimensional that is that is part of the paper it's amazing This is another one that tore, but I will, um, again, I will use this. I will not let it stop me. So we'll figure out how to, how to use that. Now the um, colors on the camera are very, very dull. Um, and some of them, when the prints start out really dull, I do, um, if they're really muted out, I do bump them up with a filter in my um, photo um, software. So, um, so if things look super weird compared to what you're seeing now, part of it is the camera, webcam, cheap webcam, and part of it is um, this compared to the pictures. I do, do um, often do a uh, filter. This one was absolutely gorgeous. Much brighter than I liked. I don't like that pink. I don't like the iridescent pink. I mean, for the right journal, I guess it's okay. But for everyday use, this is not something that I would, I would be drawn to. But it's beautiful. And so by doing it the way that I do it, I get a little bit of pattern on, on each side because I'm laying the papers on top of each other. So we're sharing the beauty between the pages. So gorgeous. I love this one. I may have to use this one in the fairy journals because this is absolutely stunning. Look at this up here. Oops. In here, whoops, up here. My camera, my monitor's um, backwards, so it's just absolutely gorgeous. Uh -huh. This is another one that tore, um, and so look at that. It pulled back that whole piece, but I will figure out how to use that. Not sure how, but I will. This will not get thrown away, <laughs> so it's gorgeous. This is another one that tore here, but it's absolutely stunning otherwise. Look at that beauty. I 
I did have a few pages that got just completely obliterated and I'm not going to try to uh, to restore those. Um, they, they had just multiple tears everywhere so I'll have to kind of research and see what happened so that I don't repeat that but we still got an amazing, um, I'm going to show you the stack here in a second. I love this. This would be so beautiful in an ocean journal. This almost looks like the sand and the beach. Beautiful. Again, I don't like the silver. That's the silver. And then this one, we had a little tear at the top. Beautiful. So gorgeous. Another one that had some tears, but we will make it work. This is that one where we did it dry and we had that wider edge and I love what happened here. I think we did, um, did we get some tearing on this one? I'm not sure. It may be just, oh, right here. So I will fix this one up too because I love that. I love that design. And then this one didn't get any coffee dye on the back, but I love it like it is too. So that is it. This is the one that I was so sad that tore. This was one of the first ones I separated, but I think I can come in and, um, I don't know, maybe use some matte medium or something and pull that back together and um, and kind of maybe even accentuate that tear and make it look like it was deliberate. So that is that. So um, look at the other side too. It's absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. So thank you guys for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something. And um, I just thank you for being here. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.